All right then gang, so far we've seen how to use core modules and packages that are built into the node core. For example, the FS module to work with the file system. But what if we want to use some additional packages for extra features in node that are not available in the node core? Now this could be for something like a JavaScript utility library like Lodash or maybe a package to help with validation logic or it could even be some kind of framework for building node websites like Express. There are literally thousands of user-made packages that we can use with Node and we can install them using NPM, the Node Package Manager. Now, NPM is automatically installed onto your computer when you install Node and it's a tool that we can use to install, update or remove Node packages onto our computer directly and also into our individual projects to use. Now, you might have even used NPM in the past for installing front-end frameworks or libraries like Vue and React or something else, but we're going to be using it to install packages that are going to help us with our Node website. So you can reach the NPM site by going to npmjs.com. That link will be down below. And on this website, we can search for different packages we might want to use in our project. So for example, I could search for Lodash. And if we click on that result, we can see how to install Lodash and how to use it in Node. And also hopefully a homepage and a repository to check out the docs and how to use this package. Another package is Nodemon, and this is the one we're going to be installing first of all onto our computer, and this helps us with a development workflow so we don't have to keep restarting the server manually. So I'm going to use NPM first of all to show you how to install this globally onto your computer. Okay then, so Nodemon is a package which helps us to create a live reload server and that's really going to speed up the development process because currently every time we make any kind of change to our server code we have to cancel out of the current process in the terminal and then rerun the file again and this restarts the server to reflect those changes in the browser. So let me just demo this. If I change this redirect here from about me to about us, now I've changed the code. I would have to first set the file, then cancel out of this current process by clicking control C, then run the file again by saying node server, and then pressing enter. Then I could see those changes in the browser when I make a request. So I could go to about us now and it would work. It would redirect for me but this would get tiresome after every code change that we make having to restart the server down here manually. So Nodemon helps us to combat that by automatically restarting the server whenever changes are made and saved to our file. So first of all, let's install Nodemon down here. First of all, cancel out of the process. Then to install a package using NPM, we say NPM install. Now, if we take a look at the Nodemon package over here, it's going to show us how to install this package. So just scroll down and we can see right here, it says npm install hyphen G, which means install globally on our computer Nodemon right here. So because we're installing something globally on our computer, it means we're not just installing it for our current project right here. It can be used anywhere on our computer. So essentially we're using NPM to install a program globally on our computer, right? So we can use it in different projects in the future as well. So let's do that. We'll pass in the global flag to say we're installing globally and then the package name, which is Nodemon. Press enter. It's just going to take a few seconds to install that package. All right then, so once that's done, instead of writing node server to run this file as we normally would, now we can use nodemon because we installed that package and then the file name server. And this does the same thing. It's going to listen for requests now on port 3000, but now it's set up a live reload server and it's watching our code. So if I make a change to about blah, and save that, then watch down here, it automatically restarts the server due to changes. We don't have to cancel out of any kind of process and rerun the file. It does that for us. And if we go over here now, we can just go to about hyphen blah, and this is going to work. So that is a lot easier than before where we had to manually restart the server every time we change our code. So that is a package that was installed globally on our computer. But what about packages that are specific to our project? 
All right then, so the package file is a JSON file and it keeps track of any packages we install locally to our project and other things as well, such as project details and any kind of project specific scripts. Now, if you're thinking of using any kind of third party packages at all in your project, then you should definitely create a package JSON file. So we do that by coming down to the terminal and saying npm init and this initializes us a package.json file. Now it's going to ask us a series of questions about our project and it gives us a default value in brackets. If we want to accept them, we can just press enter. Otherwise you can override those by typing in a new one. For the most part, I'm going to enter through these and just accept the default values because they're all fine, but you could fill these in if you want to. Okay, so once you've gone through that, it creates us this package.json file. And by the way, you should already see a package lock.json file as well. And that file right there keeps track of the different dependency versions that we have installed in our project. We don't need to go in and edit anything at all inside that file. This file right here keeps track of a few different things about our project, such as the name, the version, all of the different questions that we answered over here. We also have some scripts right here that we could run for this project, and we might look at scripts a little bit later on. But more importantly, this package file will keep track of our project dependencies. And by dependencies, I mean all of the packages we install locally into this project those packages will become things the project depends on, hence them being called dependencies. So any node project that you create and you will install third party packages for that project, you should definitely create a package.json file for that project by running npm init. Okay then, so now we have that package.json file right there. We can go ahead and start to install packages locally to the project. Now, these packages could be like utility libraries, date time libraries, frameworks, etc., which help us implement extra features into our code and project. So what I'm gonna do is install a utility library called Lodash. So if we go to the NPM website and search for this, Lodash right here, and click on that, we should see the installation right here. So npm i, which is short for install, so you can use this instead of the install keyword if you want to, save with double dash in front of it, and then a low dash. Now this save flag right here, this saves it to our local dependencies for this project. And then it's gonna register that inside the package.json file so it can keep track of that. Now, if you've got a new version of Node and NPM, you don't need to explicitly use this save flag. It's gonna install it and save it automatically to our dependencies. But if you have an older version, then you should use this. If you're unsure, just use it to avoid any kind of doubt. So this is what we're gonna install. But before we do that, let's open up the Lodash homepage as well and take a look at the different things we can do if we go to the documentation. So you can see we can access a load of different methods using underscore and then dot. So underscore is the Lodash library. That's what we require from it when we install it. And then when we use that, we can use a load of different methods, utility methods from that library. So let me go back. We'll install this first of all, then just try out a couple of the different methods. So I am now gonna come down here and say npm install, or you can use i, and I'm gonna install Lodash. Now, I don't need the save flag because I've got a recent version of Node. So if I press enter, it's gonna install that locally for me, and we can see now inside the package.json file, this dependencies object right here. And inside that, we have Lodash and the version number. So this is keeping track of what package we are using, or what packages we are using in this project, and it's saying that Lodash is one of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to use Lodash in our code. So in server.js, the first thing we need to do is actually require that at the top. So I'm gonna say const and then underscore is equal to require. And we wanna require Lodash. Now, Node is automatically gonna know to look inside the Node modules folder right there, which has just magically appeared. And that appeared when we installed that local package. So whenever we install a local package into our project, 
it's going to create a node modules folder and all of the different files and folders that are needed for that package and the dependencies of that package are going to be kept inside node modules but we don't need to directly go into this folder ever okay they're just kept there so what I'm going to do now is try to use this right here, Lodash. And by the way, you can call this what you want. You can call it low if you prefer, but common practice is just to use the underscore. And then down here inside this function right here, I'm just going to try using it. So let me come right to the top. And in fact, we'll get rid of this console log. We don't need that anymore. And let's do instead a little comment and say a Lodash. Okay, so say I want to get a random number. Lodash provides us with a utility method to do that. So I can say const num is equal to Lodash dot, and then we use the random method. And it can take in two arguments, and those two arguments are what we want the number to be between, so the boundaries. So I could say 0 and 20, for example, and that's going to get us a random number every time this function runs that is between 0 and 20. So let's try logging that to the console, console.log, and we'll log out num. Okay, so we need to run this, and we're going to use nodemon to do that. So nodemon server, and press enter, and it crashed. It says it's waiting for file changes before starting. So something's not quite right, and let's have a look what that error is. Okay, it says cannot find module load dash and that's because i misspelled it right here it should be low dash not load dash so let me save that again and come down here notice it automatically restarts the server when we fix that error so let's go to the browser now and let's go to for example just forward slash and we get the home page back everything still works but now in the console we can see this random number 17. if i refresh we're going to get a different random number 18. If I refresh again, it's going to be something different, 12. So this is pretty nice. This is just one of the different methods we can use. All right, so let's have a look at another one. So let me create a function. I'm going to say const greet is equal to some kind of function right here, an arrow function. And inside here, I'm just going to say console.log, and then we'll say hello. Right Now imagine I only wanted this function to ever be allowed to run once, once only. Well, I could use lodash to do that. So in front of this, I'm going to say lodash dot once, which is a method in itself. And inside here, as an argument, we pass the function that we want to execute only once. So now if I call the function down here, it's going to work. But if I call it again, it's not going to allow me to run it twice. And we should only see this once logged to the console. So if we save that and refresh over here, we can come down here and we see hello only logged once to the console. So that's nice as well. And like I said, there are loads more different methods we can use with Lodash, but this is not a Lodash course. This is a node course. And I'm just showing you how to install third party packages here. If you want to learn more, definitely check out the Lodash website and you're going to see all of the different methods and properties we can use in the documentation right here. Okay. So there are many other packages that we can use as well as this one. And we're going to see much more of them as we go on. So another good thing about npm and the package.json file is that it allows us to easily share project code. So imagine I wanted to share all of this project code with friends or colleagues or something, then I could email it to them or I could upload it to GitHub for them. But this node modules folder right here could be absolutely huge with loads of different packages and dependencies inside it. Now, I really don't want to upload that for them for that reason. I just want to send them or upload the project code that I write. So if I, for example, upload all of the project code to GitHub, like I've done here for my course files, then you're not going to see that node modules folder. And typically people won't do this. They won't upload the node modules folder. So if I was to download this code by going over here and then clicking on download zip, if I unzip that folder, then open it up in a text editor, I'm not going to see this node modules folder. And it's going to look something like this. If I right click and delete it, it's going to look something like this. Now, if I try to run this, let me cancel out of this process and run it again, nodemon server, then I'm going to get an error. And that's because it cannot find this module, Lodash. 
and we're trying to use that right here inside the server file and if we were trying to use other packages as well because we don't have the node modules folder where all of those packages live it's going to error because of those as well so we can't run this at the minute first of all we have to install all of the different packages that this project uses now remember they are listed inside this package.json file right here under dependencies so we know the different packages that we need to install and there could be four or five or even more here so we'd have to install all of them now fortunately we don't have to say npm install lodash then npm install something else and something else all separately we don't have to do that when we have a package.json file which lists the dependencies all we have to do is say npm install and hit enter and that's going to look inside the package.json file at this dependencies property right here and install all of the different dependencies listed right here and that's going to do all of them in one file swoop so now if we try to run this by saying nodemon server and press enter then it's going to work without error so that's another nice thing about the package.json file so if you're ever looking at a project that uses node on github chances are you're not going to see the node modules folder and the same is true for my github course files so if you're trying to view the code for a specific lesson for example lesson eight or seven you're not going to see that node modules folder and if you download this then when you open it up in your text editor first of all you need to run npm install to install any dependencies first and then it will work so then now we know all about npm and the package.json file and how to install different packages in the next video we're going to install another package called express and this is a framework for node that helps us to easily create node websites so we're going to learn all about that in the very next lesson